Natalie, you're really not gonna like what I'm about to say. I just got assigned to go away for business. Why now of all times? No, absolutely not. Are you serious? When do you have to leave? This Friday. That's two days from now! Trust me, I wish I didn't have to go. I have to go to some remote island way out in the Atlantic Ocean. The waves are rough, so the ship's rate of departure is low, meaning I might not be able to leave when I want to. That sounds really rough. Doing infrastructure maintenance at places like that is an important job. Even if it's hard work, I know you'll be up for the task. I'm sure you'll work hard like you always do. Yeah, but you're weeks, maybe even days away from having the baby. According to my boss, they were gonna send someone else to go, but they got appendicitis and had to go to the hospital. The only other person that could go was me. That's why it's so sudden, huh? If that's the case, then I guess there's nothing you can do about it. Don't worry about me. I totally understand. Just get back here in one piece. Are you fine being alone? You might get contractions when I'm not there. Well, I'd feel more confident if you were by my side, but... Even if you're not here, I'm the one giving birth, so... <laughs> I'm sorry my job has so many business trips. It's true that I can't do anything even if I'm there, but... I still feel really guilty for leaving you. I'll go straight to the hospital if something happens, so don't worry. The nurses and doctors at that hospital are very reliable. Your acquaintance works at the same hospital, right? Everyone will be there for me. Oh yeah, Daniel's there. I've been able to count on him ever since high school. Yep, so it'll be fine. Well, honestly, I did prepare myself for this situation. In the back of my mind, I kind of knew they'd send me away at the worst possible timing. I had a bad feeling. Honestly, me too. <laughs> and look at that, we were both right. When will you come back? It's supposed to end after 10 days, but I'm not sure yet. This season has a lot of hurricanes, and the ships won't depart depending on the weather. I'll pray that nothing happens while I'm there. If it's just 10 days, you'll probably make it back before my due date. There's no signs I'll give birth super soon, so there's nothing to worry about. I might go past my due date and have to use a birth inducer. <laughs> that would also worry me, but... I'm sure you will be able to come home before I give birth. Why don't you ask the baby to wait for you? <laughs> Please stay in mommy's belly until daddy comes back, okay? You're so desperate! <laughs> oh, maybe the baby is impatient like mommy. I hope the baby just looks like you, not acts like you too. I wonder if this child will be similar to Daddy or Mommy. I'm so excited! I hope for our sake, it'll look more like you than me. <laughs> the boat finally reached shore. I can't believe how long that trip felt. I'm so happy to be back home. How are you feeling? I'm gonna speed home so I can see you. Is this Natalie's husband? I assume it is. I have some unfortunate news. Your wife and baby have both passed away. What? Natalie? What are you talking about? Don't even joke around about something like that. This isn't a joke. Like I said, your wife and baby have passed away. And like I said, stop saying that! It's not funny at all! If they're gone, then who's talking to me right now? I'm Natalie's father, Philip Smith. What? Are you serious? No way, this is all BS. Stop dragging this stupid joke on. I know we've never spoken before, but I need you to listen to me. I understand how you must be feeling right now. It doesn't feel real for me either. What? You're really her father? What else do I have to say for you to believe me? Yesterday, I received my daughter's personal belongings after her autopsy. She had her phone on her when she passed, which is how I'm speaking with you right now. I don't believe anything you're saying. Natalie, come on. I'm really begging you to stop. 
This isn't funny. Tom, I wish this were a joke. Hang on a second. Natalie always said you two were on really bad terms. Why would you even know about her passing away in the first place? I was notified by the police. Apparently, they contacted you several times but couldn't reach you. I was on a business trip on a remote island. Half of the island has no service, so it must have not gone through. Well, that explains why they couldn't reach you. But it doesn't excuse you from not being by her side when she was that far along in her pregnancy. Oh my god. I think you might actually be telling the truth. What happened to her? Natalie lost balance while she was going down some stairs and hit her head pretty badly. Some passers-by called the ambulance, but she died before the ambulance took her to the hospital. Your unborn son unfortunately didn't make it either. You're lying! Do you really expect me to believe that happened? Whether you believe it or not, it's the truth. I can't believe you would leave your wife so close to the birth of your child. If you were by her side, this wouldn't have happened. It's all your fault, my baby girl is gone. It was a business trip. I had to be the one to go. I was worried about leaving Natalie behind, but she said she was fine. You know how nice of a person she is. Of course she would say that. She was trying to not be in the way of your work. This can't be happening. When I saw her at the coroner's office, I could barely recognize her. Her face was severely injured from her fall. Her final moments must have been pure pain and fear. Where is her body now? I need to go see her. I'm going to come right now. You think that you have a right to see her? I won't allow you to attend her funeral. In fact, I don't want you to ever come near me or anyone else in our family ever again. I'm Natalie's husband. I should be the one to hold her funeral, right? The husband that left her alone and caused all this to happen. You're not coming near her funeral. You must be crazy if you think I'd let you come. In fact, I bet you weren't even on a business trip. I bet you went on a secret vacation. Did you want to enjoy some freedom away from her? Of course not! I just spent almost two weeks in a place that doesn't even have a supermarket. I didn't have the internet the entire time I was there. Who would willingly go there? You're probably just some sick, twisted person that likes suffering. Anything to get away from the stress of home, right? You left in order to get away from your pregnant wife, didn't you? Just say it. Say you left her because you couldn't stand being with her. I went to the island to do infrastructure maintenance. The person who was originally supposed to go couldn't due to an illness, so I had to go. I swear that's why. I wish I never had to go. Regardless of what excuse you come up with, the funeral will be held without you. I won't be telling you where we're burying her either. Wait. I'll apologize for leaving my wife and going on the business trip. I didn't think that something like this would happen. From the bottom of my heart, I'm so sorry all of this happened because of me. Finally, an apology. That's what I've been waiting to hear. It's too late, though. You have nothing to do with our family anymore. I'm sorry I didn't apologize sooner. I just didn't think it was real. I thought Natalie was trying to play some dark joke on me. Please let me attend the funeral at the very least. I beg you. No matter how much you apologize, it's not going to bring my daughter back to me. I'm not changing my mind. You didn't just take my daughter away. You took my only grandson away, too. I'm never going to let you forget what you've done as long as you live. Philip, how is the funeral going? Is the wake today in the memorial service tomorrow? There's nothing I have to tell you. Either way, you can't come to the funeral. Okay, but I need you to confirm some things for me. I need to take care of some paperwork. Maybe I could just forward them to you and you could fill them out since you won't tell me anything. There's no way I would tell you. If I tell you my address, you'll come barging in. But they're important documents. 
I need to send them no matter what. Documents. What exactly are you going to send? Well, first it'll be the divorce papers. And then it'll be the invoice from my lawyer for how much I'm going to be suing her for. Are you an idiot? What's the point of divorcing someone who's dead? And what kind of sick freak sues his dead wife? You know why the best. Do you think I'd be stupid enough to fall for this forever? What are you talking about? You're Natalie, aren't you? And you're an idiot, aren't you? How could that be possible? Were you even listening to what I said? Natalie passed away. And it's your fault. Well then, have you submitted the death certificate? Of course I did. Well then, I'll go down and request a copy of it. If you're lying, I'll know right away. Well, actually, I haven't done it yet. I'm going to, though. I was busy today, so I'll do it tomorrow. I see. Then once you do, let me know. I'll go check. Okay? Are you there, Philip? Why would I contact you? I don't want to speak with you. Is that so? That's too bad. How dare you have the audacity to doubt me after everything you've done. You don't need to keep pretending. I know everything. What? Once I got home, I didn't know what to do in the now empty house. I couldn't believe Natalie was gone. While I was curled up on the floor crying, I received a call. A call? From where? From the hospital Natalie was supposed to give birth at. A nurse I know told me Natalie successfully gave birth and was discharged from the hospital. Isn't that odd? Didn't Natalie fall down the stairs and die along with our child? That nurse probably just called the wrong number. How ridiculous. Also, apparently Natalie asked the hospital to do something weird. She asked them not to notify me that she gave birth. Do you know the reason my wife would say that? There's no way I'd know. It doesn't matter, because that nurse definitely doesn't know what she's talking about. Everyone who witnessed the birth knew the reason. That's because the baby that was born was... Well, the baby came out with dark skin. It was very clearly not my son. No way. There's no way that would happen. There's one possibility that I can think of. Natalie was having an affair. Don't mess around. You're like the biggest dirtbag ever. You kill your wife and now you're saying she was cheating. Huh. The way you're speaking is strange, Philip. You're speaking more feminine. I got upset so I accidentally typed incorrectly. I'm too busy to be playing along with your lies. I'm also too busy to be playing along with your farce. Hurry up and spit out the truth. I have nothing to say. I'll never contact you again. Hey, what's wrong? Weren't you never going to contact me again? Is that how you speak to your father-in-law? You're still keeping this act up. Hurry up and tell me what you need. There was something I forgot to say. Pay for my daughter's funeral fees. Excuse me? My daughter lost her life because of you. Isn't it obvious for you to pay? Why do I need to pay for the funeral expenses? Absolutely not. You're telling me to cover everything. Don't you have a shred of remorse for what you've done? You're her husband after all, right? The least you could do is cover the funeral costs. Huh? You're making me pay for a funeral you demanded I stayed away from? Also, you said to never come near you or your family and to never contact you. And yet you keep reaching out to me over and over. Which one is it? At least be up front with me. You want to pocket that money and disappear forever. What do you mean, disappear? I don't know what you're talking about. God, talking to you makes me want to go back to that island. Well then, I'll notify you of two things. What are you talking about? Don't try to act like the tough guy. 
You won't be so tough when I make you pay for what you've done. First, I'll dispose of all your belongings. Oh, is that so? Whatever. Is that it? One more thing. There's something I haven't spoken to you about. It's regarding the inheritance. The inheritance? Well, I'll listen then. Since it's something important. My parents told me about this recently, but... Apparently, my parents own some property. Recently, its net worth has been increasing, and its asset value is said to be worth close to a million dollars. Are you kidding me? My parents just told me they'll be leaving me the property once they're gone. In fact, they said I could have it now if I already had plans for how I'd use it. They said I can use it any way I want. OMG, you'd be set for life if you sold that land. I wanted to use it to save up money for post-retirement. I thought I could make Natalie's life easier this way too. What? She could buy as many designer items as she wanted. And I could take her on as many trips abroad as desired. But Natalie isn't here anymore, right? What a shame. I guess I'll have to find someone else to spend all this money on. Wait! I wonder if I will be able to use up a million dollars on my own. Well, if there's some left over, I guess I could donate it. Um, I'm sorry. I lied. Hmm? I'm Natalie. There's a reason behind this. Yeah, I've known that it's you for a while. I'm not stupid. So, you were having an affair, weren't you? Yes. But it was supposed to be a one-night stand. I don't care about that. It doesn't matter what you intended it to be. You cheated, plain and simple. Who's the father? I don't remember his name. We met on social media and just decided to meet up for a little bit. We hit it off as we were talking and naturally ended up having a relationship. How does someone naturally establish a physical relationship with someone you barely talk to online? You were intending to sleep with him from the start, right? You better get searching and figure out who the father is. I can't. I don't know which person it is. Wow. There isn't just one person? Yes. So you slept around with multiple men. How convenient. You slept with the whole city while I was out living in the Stone Ages on an island. It's because I was lonely. That's a horrible reason. I didn't think this would happen. You are a psychopath for making up this whole lie about you and our son dying. Honestly, you need help. I went to the hospital because my contractions came way earlier than I expected. I messaged you, but I couldn't send it. My contractions got worse, so I decided to contact you later. Yeah, like I've said a hundred times, I didn't have cell service. Once I arrived at the hospital, things happened quickly, and it was a speedy birth. But the baby was clearly one of my affair partner's children. I got scared, thinking you might divorce me. Why did you pretend to be your father? I don't know my father's contact information, so I thought it would be hard to be found out. And if it's my parents, they can retrieve my body. I wanted to make it so my dad did all the procedures after my death. I thought I could trick you if I pushed you away. There's no way you could trick me. I'm not a child. Yeah, I learned that the hard way. I panicked when you pointed out the thing with the death certificate. You seriously didn't stop and think for a second how insane that plan was. You know, I told you I'm an airhead sometimes. Like, I'm a bit in my own world? That's a kind way of saying you're a moron. That's mean! I don't think you have any right to criticize me. You have your faults too! You were barely ever home! You worked so much and you were away on business all the time! Come on! You think I wanted to be away that often? Every time I went on those business trips, my salary nearly doubled. I was doing it for you and our future son. Don't you get that? You were? Do you not remember? I told you before and you said you understood, right? But not only did you sleep with other men while I worked, you also got pregnant. We're done. Even a fool like you should be able to understand that at this point. 
I'm sorry. I'm sure you're not apologizing out of the goodness of your heart. There has to be something you want from me. Come on. I apologize for cheating and lying. I'll do anything, so please don't divorce me. I don't want you to take me out of the inheritance. That's what you want, after all. Just when I thought you couldn't get any more pathetic, you outdo yourself. Please! What are you going to do with your child? It's not a baby I had with you, so I don't need it. I'll put it up for adoption. Or, if you want, I can raise them as our child. What do you want to do? I don't want to see you ever again. Why? It's because I despise you from the bottom of my heart. I'll never forgive you. Why? I'm apologizing so much. Apologizing isn't going to make anything better. Please, please don't abandon me. I could never be with someone who's willing to abandon their own child for money. Sorry, but can you never interact with me again? After all, you're supposed to be dead. Afterwards, I divorced Natalie and sued her for her affair. Natalie tried to register that baby as ours, but I didn't let it happen. Instead, Natalie's older sister and her husband, who hadn't had kids for several years, decided to take the child in. The baby became their adoptive child and is being raised lovingly. The baby is innocent, so I was relieved. Perhaps I should have raised him, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. I know it might seem selfish, but I just couldn't raise another man's child. By the way, unlike Natalie, her sister gets along with their father and keeps in contact with him to this day. Her sister and her father, who found out about Natalie's actions, were enraged. To set things right, they monitor Natalie's actions and make her send money every month for her child. Apparently, Natalie is living a poor life, unable to rely on anyone. She ambushed me once, but my wife has already passed away, so I couldn't hear a word she said. It seems she was shocked by my indifference and has not attempted to show herself in front of me again. All I hope for is for her to change and become an honest and sincere person 